Hi, I'm Katia Estes. I'm a survivor of childhood sexual abuse and a nationally recognized advocate for victims in the community. I'm really outraged by Mike O'Connell trying to exploit names of the victims in the community. To learn more, watch this video below. Jefferson County Attorney Mike O'Connell is pushing the court to take this rare step. Arguing that those who say they were victims do not have the right to hide their identity despite accusations they were raped as teenagers by LMPD police officers. Wave 3 News troubleshooter Eric Flack spoke with O'Connell today. He joins us now and you asked him would he feel any different, Eric, Eric were, were the alleged victims' names be made public. And you know what, Shannon? He told me that's not the point. He said the law is on the side of the city and those police officers in this debate. The attorney for the alleged victims telling me tonight this is an intimidation tactic meant to silence victims of sexual abuse. The names of LMPD officer Brandon Wood and former officer Kenneth Betts have been known ever since Wave 3 News broke the story last October about the internal investigation of alleged sexual abuse within the department's Youth Explorer program. And they are both named in a sealed civil lawsuit filed earlier this month, accusing them of raping a teenage explorer while they were officer advisors to the program. Now attorneys for the victim and the defendants want that lawsuit made public with one very critical and controversial difference. It is not fair for them to be named and not have the plaintiffs in this case named. Not fair? These individuals have not been dealt a fair hand. Metro Council President and Victims Attorney David Yates wants his clients' names hidden from all court filings, referred to only by their initials to protect their identity. But attorneys for the defendants, including Jefferson County Attorney Mike O'Connell, who represents the city and the police department in the case, says the alleged victims have no more right to privacy than the men they're accusing. You know, my client and the administration and everybody involved is very serious, are very serious minded in their concern about anything that goes on in this lawsuit, all right? But the playing field needs to be level. O'Connell says by law, the only way alleged victims' names should be kept anonymous is if special circumstances required it. And because the alleged victims aren't underage anymore, O'Connell says this case doesn't meet that bar. But Yates says his clients were allegedly abused as youth, and publishing their names would only serve to humiliate them and keep others from coming forward. But for that to go across the media, for them to have to live with that the rest of their life, for everybody, their friends, their family, the community to know the intimate details of their victimization, that shows no public purpose. But I might ask if you were the alleged victim or I were the alleged victim. It doesn't victim. matter what, whether I was the alleged victim or, or not. The, the issue is what is the law with respect to keeping cases sealed tran or, or closed or people not identified? That's the issue. It's not my personal feelings one way or the other. Now, this entire argument came out of a motion before the judge this morning to unseal that lawsuit and make it public. The judge will now rule first on whether to unseal the lawsuit and then on whether the victim's full names should be included in it. Those decisions are not expected until early May. Scott. The reality is this is I didn't say what Mike said. It was a newscast that we posted that he spoke to the media coming out of court, they were his comments, and his comments were, were strong, they were clear. Don't take my word for it, go watch the newscast. You know, he made it clear that he wanted to level the playing fields the way he called it. He thought it was only appropriate that if the officers were named, these officers who committed heinous rape of children were named, that he thought the, that these, these victims, because they were over the 18 now, that their names should also be out there. Those are his words, not mine. I'm not mincing words. I'm not chopping his words up. Go listen to his own words. Now, he might have, after the fact, publicly changed his position after he got back to the office and everyone said, Mike, what the heck did you just say? I can't believe that you believe that. But it's one thing to, to, to retract your position. It's what you say, and those are his words. And again, the fact that we're here today, he's telling you, well, it'll be up to the court to decide if, if these, these folks, uh, I don't see any motions filed by Mike to, to say, let me keep this secret as far as their names and identities. Let's deal with this case, protect victims. And that's what we should be doing. Because what happened in this town makes me ashamed. It should make all of us ashamed. Kids were hurt. And at some level, there was a cover-up. At some level.
And the hope is that someday we'll get to that level if folks in this government don't try to sweep it under the rug with confidential settlements or, or whatever else, because we deserve the truth. This town needs to clean up its act. And so uh, my hope is that, uh, that we'll get to that truth, but we'll see. But ultimately that video that we put on Facebook speaks for itself. Don't take my word for it. Don't take Mike's word for it. Go listen to it and take your own ears words for it.